times in rain in the midst of your parade and the hard times come after you had a great day for with every test there's a time and a season and with every trial purpose and reason sometimes you're hurting yeah. there's a pain deep within seem like the more you pray that thing just won't ever end no just have patience and heart Say I'm strong. I'm WKZK. Um, here hosting once again. Hey, I used to be here 2006 called Can We Talk? Started right here. But today I'm being interviewed by one of my good friends, Dr. Aisha Leverett. We're going to talk about a little politics here. I'm running for re-election as many of you in Augusta know. I'm a commissioner for District 6. Been there for the last three and a half years and running for re-election. Uh, my model a couple of years ago was building a model community through trust and always moving our community to the future because we got some other legs and tentacles as well. So I'll leave that for my interviewer to, um, to pose those questions to me. So at this particular time, I turn over to Dr. Aisha Levitt. Dr. Levitt, thank you for being here. Thank you, Ben, it's a pleasure. Go ahead. Thank you, Ben, it's a pleasure to be in here with you. Of course, I am excited that you are up for re-election. This gives us the opportunity to start again get some good things done for the city, and yes, we have lots of questions for you. Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. I am ready. Go right ahead. All right, well, first off, tell us what district you're running for. I'm running for District 6. I've been living in District 6 ever since 1986 itself, but it just recently changed back in um, 2012, I think, or 2012 or 14, to where I was in District 4, but they, they redistricted me, and as a result of that, I ended up in District 6. Okay, and how far does District 6 go? Because I think some people don't realize Well, District 6 district. is a quite extensive size district. If you want to go by Augusta Tech, or where the court was on Dean's Bridge Road, you go straight down on that right-hand side, coming from that direction. You turn down Willis Road, you go over, then you go back over to Lumpkin Road. When you go to Lumpkin Road, you stay to your right-hand side, go all the way to, uh, what I would say, uh, Peach Orchard Road. Peach Orchard Road, you stay on your right hand side, go all the way up. Lunker, when you once you get to Winston Spring Road, you can swing a right, everything there pretty much comes into District 6. Then you take it, either you go straight up Peach Orchard Road, all the way to Brown Road. You go to Brown Road, you make a left there, you stay on your left hand side where the Orchard uh, Housing Development is. You go all the way to Old Louisville Road, all the way straight down, you stay on your left hand side once again because across the street on the Goshen side is District 8. Wow. And so if you take it, you go there, you get the old Louisville Road, the end of it on 56, you go all the way back down to um, old Louisville Road again, you pretty much put yourself in a box. That's about pretty much, that's the gist of the district. It's much larger than that, but that gives you an idea. There's about 25,000 citizens live in my district, about 13, right at 14,000 registered voters. All right, so we need you to get out and vote, but hopefully it's going to tell us some good things that's going to motivate us and encourage us to get out and vote. So I have a question, Ben. We're always talking about um, Augusta, and people aren't saying all those positive things. What are the strengths you see that we have as Augusta being a commissioner, from a commissioner's point of view? Well, I think my, my, my strengths go back, truth be told, it goes back forever being a commissioner. I think all my life I firmly believe that Augusta, uh, has so much potential, but I also believe in reaching that potential. The African American community is very instrument, instrumental in that process, uh, maturing and developing and getting the best out of this community. But from being a commissioner at a particular point, we have already cracked the seal. The seal is broken in terms of people beginning to feel well about Augusta. When you talk about the governor taking out of his own purse string, put $100 million here, we put $16 million. You look at $116 million on the riverfront. You look at Fort Gordon, they've already spent by a little over $2 billion there. Between now and 2026 or 28, they're going to spend another $2 billion out there. With that said, then you're talking about the casinos beginning to grow. The Builders Pack also endorsed us this time. And one of the concerns that they had, they were ready to come back to Richmond County and start building the South Augusta area because they realized the potential is here in Augusta, Richmond County. The only thing they're asking is to streamline the process. They mm -hmm. said we have too much bureaucracy in between bringing in a, your blueprint and from the time they get it back but they can start actually building. Right. So we're doing those kinds of things. And the quality of life, last but not least, um, we've taken and given our employees raise. We've raised uh, public safety salaries. We've uh, increased the benefit multipliers. Now, what does that have to do with the city of Augusta? Well, what that means, once we make the people comfortable, somewhat comfortable, 
who provide all the daily basic service from you, then you get a better product at the end. Absolutely. Now, Ben, I remember, you know, because we've had several conversations throughout the course of your being a commissioner this last term. And so one of the things you were telling me about is some of the grassroots stuff that you do. Let's talk about that a little bit, because people look at the big things. But I like I like when you got your finger on the pulse and you're with the people. So tell me a little bit about some of those grassroots things you've done that you've kind of stepped in and took care of that people were probably going to overlook or let go. Well, well, for the most part, those are kind of things that I think that I really appreciate because mm -hmm. I think that everybody should get the basic services to which they pay for. And what that is is meaning that if you have a challenge in your neighborhood, whether it's a, whether it's a stormwater issue, whether it's an issue about grass not being cut, whether it's an issue about a tree that's about to fall on your property, all of, all of the above, once you make the phone call to me, I will come to your property. I will look at it and I will assess it to see is it real first and foremost. And if it is, I will take and make a phone call from right there on site and move from out of days or weeks and sometimes the very next day. Those issues will be resolved. I have never, and let me repeat, I have never given a constituent, and a constituent is anybody who lives in the city of Augusta, I have never given them say, well, you need to call 311. I will come to your property. Many times I've gotten calls from them at the commission meeting. I look at the phone, I walk out, I call them, and they tell me what they are. I said, if I get out here early today, I'll come by there. But I'm mm -hmm. sure if I don't be there today, I'll be there the next morning. I put. I think I have a 95% track record in making that happen. And I think that says a lot for itself because most people say, more so than anything else, they may not like the policies that we implement, but at the same time, they want to be recognized and respected for what they are paying for. And at this time, I have a 95% track record of the accident. And I think that's so important. And, and uh, as we are talking, I want voters to understand those things are, are what makes you a great commissioner. And that's something that we need to keep. And sure, there's things that we would like to see done. It's a bigger picture, of course. But that's why you have to have a commissioner that's willing to come to you. Because if he's willing to come to you, he's willing to talk with you. And that's what you need. Like sometimes we get blindsided because we don't put enough input and we don't give it to the people who really need to hear the information. Well, well one thing about uh, the thing about Augustans that we're in such a great place now, whether you believe it or not, we're in such a great place now compared to where we were before we came on board. And I mean, me, I mean, this uh, the one, same ones who run for office there, right along with me, that we have put this community in a place to really win and to win big. Our attitudes has to change. Mm -hmm. You cannot believe everything that you hear. You must be fair and open and honest with everybody. Let the, let, let the chips fall where they may at the end of the day. But don't begin to uh, assume that people are guilty as opposed to looking at them and being innocent going in. And if, the, if the information falls to that other side of the table, then so be it. But we cannot first look at people being guilty first, and then they got to prove their innocence. I think that's unfair to everybody. So tell us a, a tough vote that you've had to make on the commission that has helped to move things forward. With your district? Well, with my district, I would say pretty much the stormwater. Stormwater okay. was, was not an a easy vote. It was a very contentious vote. Uh, there was a lot of public meetings about it. When you could go to those meetings, the people uh, were very adamant about not wanting to do that. Then you had to, you could not give those kind of exemptions. There was certain things that you can do in terms of earning tax credits, but the school board has to pay it. Mm -hmm. House of Portions has to pay it. Everybody has to pay it. And with that, that was a very tough vote, but it was a vote that was needed because when you're talking about growth, and when you're talking about development, you cannot do it without your infrastructure being in place. And already that we begin to see some of the benefits, there's always room for improvement. Right. But the stormwater plan will be reviewed in another two and a half years. We put it in there every five years it's been reviewed. We're two and a half years in, so it will be reviewed so that we can make modifications if need be. But it's one of those tough votes. But if you're talking about the Patterson Road Bridge, when it collapsed, if we did not have the stormwater money, we could not have fixed that immediately. When you're talking about the, the, the truck that many people saw went through a sinkhole on, on uh, Central Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't, if stormwater is not of it, we couldn't have done that. You had another uh, a hole that just developed on Fender Street between 12th and 13th Street. I mean, it just, 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 just caved in there. We could not have fixed that immediately without stormwater. But there are other instances to show you the magnitude. When you're talking about growing and developing infrastructure is important. Infrastructure is no different than when you're saying as a person in your profession to get your doc doctoral degree, you had to get your education. Correct. Your infrastructure is your education for opportunities to grow and develop in your community. So it's your basis, because I know someone asked about the potholes, but that's what you were just speaking on, is if we get the infrastructure better, then we can work on things like potholes. And also, always remember, we don't always know all the potholes are. 
know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But no sooner than you somebody call me the one we get there, and now she we have maybe some other other staff who will be across town. She'll look for those things. Cause I will mm-hmm. tell you, God is my witness that many times if I run across one, I do stop, get out and take a picture, and I shoot it right to our staff right there. And then I just recently done it on Central Avenue there. It was a big tree about to fall. I took the big I took a picture of it for it, and the, and the first thing I, is where is this? You know. So when you see those things, find a way. If you know your commissioners. Uh, phone number or what have you, text it to them. My phone number is 706 564 Well, I forgot my number now. 9370. <laughs> 9, it's 564 9370. And you can text it to us and we can get right on top of that. So, potholes do exist in this community, Absolutely. but you don't always know what's because sometimes they develop overnight. Yeah. And so, sure. so, but at the same time, when we start ignoring the request to do those things, that's when you really got a problem. Or we have a problem, not you. We right. have a problem. So let's talk about the budget a little bit, because I know that was one of the things that you've been working so hard on, is making sure that you maintain the budget. Talk about that a little bit. Well, when we came on board, the budget last year was a $160 million budget. When you're talking about, when you're putting all the federal and state money, it's building to about $820 million budget. $820 million budget. It is very crucial that we be mindful and spend what we can afford to spend, invest in what we can afford to invest in as a community. We've been very good about that. For the last three years, this budget has been balanced on time uh, every three, all three years. That has never been done. I've been going for wow. the commission ever since 2006. You will see the budget go all the way to the last week in December after rescheduling. You will see them saying they got to find $3 million. They got to find $5 million. Last time I was at a commission meeting uh, before running for office, Fred Russell was still the uh, administrator, and he had an arm in a sling. And I walked up to him and said, Fred, you don't find money a lot of ways, but you never found $5 million out of your arm in a sling. <laughs> you know? But that's what they were going through, and we were doing it on time. The second week, I think, in February and in, in November, we've done it all three years. But okay. issues. Awesome, awesome. So that's some good stuff, because balancing the budget, if the budget is not correct, it's going to be very hard for people to actually come into the district, do some different things. When we talk about infrastructure and those type things, none of that stuff can happen if we're overspending. Oh, absolutely not. And those are some of the things that challenges that we had because prior to us getting there, we had the, um, they went into but they went into the reserve fund uh, to their what you would call their savings account uh, for two years prior. Mm-hmm. To attempt to balance the budget, so never really, really, really balanced on time. But at the same time, they had to go into their fund balance, or their reserve funds, or their bank, or their savings account to balance the budget. We have not had to do that, and we end up with a surplus as well. So, one of the things that we gain from maintaining, because you know, anytime the hands change, it's almost like you start all over again. So, what do you gain from keeping the commissioner that you already have in that district, such as yourself? What do we, what would we gain as constituents from keeping you there? You gain the same thing you did to get us to the point we did now. What do I mean? The reason why we was able to come in with some sense of mindset of what needs to be done and how the government operated, because I had been going this since 2006. Mm-hmm. I had uh, interviewed everybody on Comcast a Community Concern, my television program, who had ran for office from 2006 up to mid-13. I also had attended 80 to 90 percent of the commission and the committee meeting, so I had a direct knowledge. I had interaction with commission, so I understood the process. When you talk about Commissioner Sam Sires, 25 years out there uh, in the in the South Augusta area on the ground every day understanding, trying to make the community life better for people out there, you got an advantage. Our mayor, our mayor being a House of Representative and a senator, understanding how government works. Mm -hmm. As a result of it, that's why you have what you have now. So now the question is, what would you get by maintaining? You will get more of the same. You will get good governance. You will get, uh, you will take this community to another level because the experience is still at the table and there's no reason to change. There's no reason to change horses in the middle of the street. I agree with that. And one of the things when you were talking about the education for me, I like how invested you've been in that interest that you took when you were sitting there at the commission meetings for such a long time, really trying to understand the process prior to even going up for election initially. That's something that I don't think most people understand. It's like they think you could just, it's almost like coming to a new job, but you were willing to do the investment, which shows you have a vested interest in making Augusta better, and I can appreciate that. Well, let me, let me you know, there's a lot of things in life we struggle about what our calling is about. There's no doubt about what my calling in life is in terms of coming to Augusta. God has always, always had, even as a young man, when I was not walking in that, in that way, that this community has always been important to me, and I just always knew it had never scratched its surface. I'm always trying to find a way, how can I get involved and make it better? I didn't necessarily see myself running for public office. That opportunity presented itself because they rezoned me in District 6, mm-hmm. and there was an open seat. And as a result of that, in my mind's eye, I looked at who become the potential 
a nominee or become the co potential commissioner, and I couldn't think of anyone I thought could represent me after the investment I had made. And as a result, I put my head in I put my head in the ring, as they would say. And as a result of that, you see what you see now. Augusta's in a place that it has never been. What is support for that? When we passed the SPLOS um, uh, in 2015, after it failed in 14, remember this. Let me talk about the SPLOS for a moment. The SPLOS was on the May 20th ballot as well. That SPLOS failed. And rightfully so, it was a special interest SPLOS. It was $198 million. But in that SPLOS also was $30 million to pay off the bond indebtedness to where they had done renovation to the building. So when you fail the SPLOS, rightfully so, you still left a $30 million debt out that it had to be paid. Right, right. We put together a SPLOS in 2015. It was deemed to be the best SPLOS pay package ever. Nice. And as a result nice. of that, you're saying that you're seeing the kind of progress and the success that this community is unprecedented. The Augusta Chronicle done two editorials over the weekend. One of those editorials has a comment in it from with Dennis Weaver and myself. Dennis Weaver's comment said that the the attitude of Augustans has to change because we're in a much better place. Ben Hassan's comment was that this is a new city. This is not the same Augusta that we inherited in 2014. They agree with both of those comments. Very impressive. I, I really like that. I think that's very impressive. So tell us about being the person. Who are you when you before you were a commissioner? Like who are you in your downtime? <laughs> my downtime. I don't, I, I don't think there's such that there's such thing as a downtime because <laughs> my mission. I'm just heavily invested in this community, and I and I'm heavily invested in hoping that the African American community, the Black community, will really, really stand up and understand that we have something to offer. Augusta is only going to reach its full potential when we reach ours. When we start with the small talk, we start with the innuendos, we start with the accusations, and we deal with facts. Mm -hmm. The third leg of my, 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 my platform when I first ran with the first was uh, to keep the community informed. I've done that. Anybody that invited me anywhere, I've went, whether a friend or foe, they gave me an invitation, I went. The second was uh, I would work for the community. We've talked about it already. The third was, I would, you know, I would, I would tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. You may not like it. It may not be popular because it may not be what you want to hear, especially when the other side is opposing something that you think you want. And right. many times, you're not sure whether you want it now. You want it because they don't want you to have it. Because right. you haven't, really haven't thought it through. Right. You're just reacting to what they have said as a result of that. So in telling you the truth, it goes back to what, what uh, what's his name, Jack Nicholson said to Tom Cruise. You can't handle the truth. We have to grow. We have to develop. We have to mature and position ourselves to understand that we're in a great place. And it's going to take us doing things differently. And like I said, because we are free in this community, we're giving it back to the taxpayers. And what does that mean? That freedom is the sole possession of those who have the courage to defend it. Will you defend the, your right or your freedom in this community, and that means putting persons back who already work for your best interest, even though you like some decisions they made sometimes, but who does? Sometimes you don't like your spouse's decisions, not like your children's decisions, but you love them just the same because you appreciate overall their body of work. Absolutely, and I think relationship is what you're talking about is, a, is very key in that because if you have a relationship with someone, you tend to trust their right. decision making. And so that's why I want people to kind of know a little bit more about what you stand for. Because uh, Ben has always been very honest and, and very informative. You've always mm -hmm. done that. And so I don't know that people always understand that about you because sometimes, you know, commissioners, you guys are out of reach sometimes for, we, we don't, not on purpose, but when you're an everyday citizen and you're moving about, you don't always get to touch the people that are making decisions for you. Well, but not only that, I mean, and another thing to add to that that makes, doesn't make it better when you say that is that I'm pretty much a loner anyway. People see me do what I do and they respect what I do, mm -hmm. but there's no real, no real interaction with me. I just do it and go to the house. I'm not <laughs> looking for the fanfare. I'm not looking for them say, all those socials. I don't attend everything, but people, if they look at my track record, I have worked for this community and I ask nothing in return. And so, and, that's, and that should be a rarity. I hate to have to say that myself, but that's what I've done. When mm -hmm. I was for Comcast there seven and a half years, didn't make a dime. I, never, I didn't work for Comcast. When I started on this radio program in 2006, I was buying radio time to talk to the community. Mm -hmm. Can we talk? Can we talk about some of the plights, some of the issues, some of the concerns in our, our community because we are better than this? I, to, uh, 96, I started a program. I was an executive director of a program called PEP, People Empowering People. Dealing with kids that were suspended like two weeks, three weeks, whatever time frame that was, keep them on the same educational level. And when that child goes back to the school, that child will not be left behind. How much did it cost you as a student? It didn't cost you a single dime. So I, I, I think what I heard, is, just correct me if I'm wrong, what I heard <laughs> you say is that 
Ben is somewhat of a loner, but he does enjoy the interactions with people. That doesn't mean that he won't come to the events. He does show up. I've seen him at several, <laughs> and he's very personal and nice when he's there. But one thing I do like is your passion to move the city forward and grow and being with the people, and that's something I've always appreciated. Well, that's what I said about this. You, if you look at my sign in front of me, the bottom it says, always moving our community to the future. In my mind, I may be taking a lot of credit for this one, but in my mind, when I look at that, it's always moving our community to the future. You got to realize that the governor, he said, my children, hundred million dollars. The city, sixteen million dollars. How much future risk does it do than in, in cybersecurity? How much more future risk does it get than that? Mm -hmm. So I started saying, making that statement in two thousand six that about the future, and now we are look, we are listed in many major magazines as one of the seven cities that has an opportunity to lead the country in cybersecurity. Very That's why I very seldom use the word forward. I use the word future because when you say forward, everything on the table said, "Man, we need to move this table forward." I want to put it back against this wall here. Pretty much, if we don't think something's going to fall over, everything here can stand on the table as we move it. Right. But when I say future, your 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 subconscious, doctor, you would know about this better than myself. <laughs> your subconscious tell you everything ain't going with it. It can't go with it. It cannot make the journey. Well, it's, and it's not supposed to. And it's not supposed to make so the journey. So I, I like that. I like that. You and are that, and, and that's what I'm saying about our communities. Some of the habits, some of the ways, some of the distrust, for, for no valid reason, you have to let it go so that you can grow. Freedom is the sole possession of those who have the courage to defend it. And all I'm asking you is to defend the track record that myself and others have and to put this community in a place that has never been before, and there's no doubt about that. Oh, I am. I, I love it. So what, one thing that I, I want to know from you is that what is the challenges you see to moving Augusta in the direction you would like to? The, the biggest thing is attitude. Mm -hmm. Attitude, I, like I say, I, like I think I hear all says all the time, all says never. Attitude is everything. It is. And we got to position ourselves to win. You, you know that yourself. You, you, you see folks with, 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 with barrels of money, stacks of money on their table, and you look and say, "What's your problem? I ain't got no money." <laughs> Well, I don't know what to do with it. Now you got the money. Now you know what to do don't with know the money. To do with it. So you, you you have to get out of bit complaining and whining because Denzel Washington says that ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. The hardships you welcome that. When you say you're gonna, if I say I'm gonna lose weight, I gotta get out and do some hustling. I gotta get out there and lift some weights. I gotta right. do some walking. I gotta do those kinds of things. So the same thing, those struggles must have a destination point in terms of what you want to accomplish, what you want to do. At the end of the day, and as a community, you have to ask yourself: This is what I want, and what am I willing to invest? Those who invest in their community are successful, and those who neglect their communities are failures. Mm, I love that. I love that. So, what can we do to help shape the attitude of Augusta? Accept the fact. First thing you do is accept the fact where, where, where we are. Realize for the last three and a half years, you have watched this, these commissions almost strangle each other. And no doubt about it, it has not been a pretty process. It's been a process that some would, uh, would associate with saying it's like making sausage. It's not pretty making the sausage, but it makes a good meal when you get through. But in spite of that, we still have had great success. Mm -hmm. So just think about if you as citizens begin to buy and to what you are actually seeing and witnesses and contribute to that, then we've been a much better place. The commissioners going in the next four years, we have been a much better place. We understand each other's habits now, our strong points, our weak points. We understand each other's uh, culture a little different now. As a result of that, we cannot do anything but win. So why would you want to start over and you're, and you're about to have a, uh, just a bust loose of the same? I don't understand it. And, and I think that's a good point. It's like um, anytime you're trying to do something different, it requires you to have a little bit of tension and, and conflict right. because everybody has a different mindset. That doesn't mean that we're not focusing on the same goal. And I think sometimes they get confused when people see the discord that sometimes mm -hmm. happens on the commission, but they don't always understand the backdrop that goes with that. Can you guys do something different to help kind of shape that backdrop a little bit more so that people will understand what the confusion is about? Absolutely. I think we, we owe the community to that because one of the things I heard constantly on the thing that's most on anything else as I've been out campaigning is that y'all need to get yourself together. Now, here's the first thing, especially if you're another African-American saying that, and most time they talk to the sixth blind. But, but we came out the same community. Correct. So you were saying in your houses of worship, like all y'all on the same page. You're acting as though you and your neighbors are all on the same page. We came out of the same environment. 
Right. So what you are doing, if you're honest with yourself and be true to yourself, you're looking at a snapshot yourself in a leadership capacity, and it is not pretty. So it is not, and I agree now. Let me be clear. I agree with you. But if, but if this is us, then you have to realize you and your neighbor have got the same issues in the normal circumstances. Correct. You and your house of person have got the same thing, and you and your coworker have got the same issues. So we all need to grow up at the end of the day, but it does. I cannot neglect this. It does start at the top. So we just need a citywide counseling session. Is that what you're trying to say? Hey, <laughs> that's the business you in. <laughs> I'm talking down your alley now, right? You are, you are, because that is very much so true. And usually the thing that we point out at other people is that thing that's within us that we don't typically like or not favorable of. Exactly, exactly. So I think we're in a great place to win, and I'm excited about the next uh, four years. Um, I do realize that we got a week, a long week of campaigning, and I think this this, this last week is going to be a very rough week. Uh, I've realized that probably the, the booger man is going to come out, but at the same time, um, as your parents told you, the booger man is not necessarily real now. It's a figment of your imagination, but if you take ownership of it, then he becomes real in your life. So we be prepared for that fight when it comes. Absolutely. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this moment in talking with Ben. I hope that he shares some things with you that will help you understand that how important it is to kind of keep our commissioners that we currently have, even though if you have some issues with them, I think you should sit down and talk with them and, and express what your concerns are, because that's the only way things are going to happen. Just sitting back complaining won't necessarily help that process. You have to be an active voter and an informed voter. And that's what we want to do. That's what we wanted to do this morning. So make sure that you guys were informed about what's going on and, and, and what Ben wants to do, his his platform, and what he's already done for the city. I think that was, we pretty much have done that. You agree with that, Ben? Uh, absolutely. And also some of the endorsements that we received from the Police Benevolent Association, um, the, uh, the, that's probably the PBA, also the Firefighters Association, as well as the Builders Association. These are three prominent entities that are very, very important to the growth and development of our community, continue growth and development. For the first time, I did get the PBA in the fire. I did not get the bills. This time, they realized the body work. They realized my influence there. With that, only thing they asked of us as a commissioner, we need you all to streamline the process. We are ready to come to, back to Richmond County. We're ready to build South Augusta out, but we need you all to streamline that process, and we are working on that as we speak with all of us and realize that we've got to streamline that process so South Augusta, South Augusta and Augusta can continue to grow. And don't miss the fact also that we are considering, we have, uh, we've hired, put $200,000 in the, um, the Economic Development Office that we're going to be hiring two persons. Those two persons will be working on development, commercial and retail development in South Augusta and in other underserved areas. Also in the midst of a conversation of putting a white water park and locking down. These, mm -hmm. these, these things are unheard of. These things are unheard of, so please don't miss the opportunity and start uh, start playing games with your future. Remember, I'm going to say this once again, and this is why I'm saying this. Freedom is the sole possession of those who have the courage to defend it. If you want to continue to be free, you want to continue to put the government back in your hand, and if you want to do that, then it is time that you stand up for the people who have given that opportunity to put this government back in your hand. Take it away from special interests. That 2014 spot that you failed, you realize the special interest, you want to know part of it, we put a package together, the best spots package ever, we're going to do the same thing for this government, but we're going to need your help. This is your freedom and not ours. We are fighting for you and not ourselves. Thank you very much for your time. Early when he was talking about the potholes, one of the things he was saying is that they don't always be aware of the potholes. If you would send that information to your commissioner or someone, a picture of the pothole, let them know where it exists. You that's know. one of the ways. Huh? You give them number um, Ben said he'll take that that uh, information from you if you know of some existing potholes. So the city doesn't always know where they all are. His number is 706-564-9370. Nine three seven zero. All right, you can I, text that to me, and I'll be glad to check into it for him. Okay. So I appreciate everybody watching. I hope you've been informed. If there's any other questions, thoughts, or comments you would like for Ben Hassan, you can feel free to send us a message um, via inbox or um, just post on our wall, or you can text him. He's given the number out several times, so you can either um, go back and review that and get the information again. Re-elect Ben Hassan for commissioner. District 6, we look forward to having your vote. Thank you.